Alright then everyone, hello and whoops, welcome to Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. And this time around it's time to murder this red dragon. I'm not going to use your conf confuse or anything, because I'm at least going to pretend to give him a chance. But let's be honest, it's pretty crummy chance here. Alright, so you, that does nothing. Nothing the red dragon do can do can do anything to me. Except his counterattack, because I'm immune to fire. Yes, that's wonderful game design there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And Gogo's just got magic evasion at the wazoo, but that's good enough. Alright, so let's see, is this a uh, Slash or Edgar? It's Edgar. So what I want to do is bioblaster him. I think that's the Bio Blaster, right? Yep. Now, if I'm lucky, Edgar will get counterattacked here. Yep, Edgar's dead. Now he's out of my way, so I know that Celeste is the only person on that controller slot. So yeah, the rest of the team can just go to town on him now. Level 4 Flare can kill Gogo, but no one else, so that's not big a deal. And the counterattacks can kill Sabin, but no one else, so those aren't a big a deal. And Celeste is just plain invincible because I'm not going to be attacking with her, and she's not a multiple level 4 here. Oh no, I revived Edgar. I forgot he existed. I like totally tuned him out of my head when I, uh... I totally tuned Edgar's existence out of my head when I was doing that earlier, when he died earlier, so I ended up just skipping my cursor straight over to Sabin. Now hopefully it'll be kind enough to kill Edgar again for me. Ah, uh, this might do him in anyway, I don't even care at this point. Yep, he's dead. Well, another ridiculously easy boss is dead. Congrats me for accomplishing essentially nothing. Four dragons left. And that's including the one that manages to be even suckier than this one. Oh boy. So, let's switch back to Mog. Save my game. This obviously isn't going to be its own segment, so let's, uh, continue on. Part 2 for now. This part's just gonna be really short. I've just gotta get up to that switch at the top with this party, and then I can go the rest of the way with Mog, pretty much. I just need to have Gogo walk straight down onto a switch later. Gogo's job is pretty much done for this dungeon. Hopefully this uh, is not phase. Nope, it's not phase fight, so... Yeah, so Gogo's team is pretty much done for this dungeon. Now that the red dragon is out of the way, I just need to get up onto the switch up here and then walk down onto a switch later. And that's it. So I've pretty much made it to the top left here. Take one step to the right, so that I can go around that bend there, but... Alright, so don't be phase. Nice, got lucky again. More tricksters and necromancer, probably. So yeah, there's pretty much no way to get another battle before the switch here. Right down. I should be on item right now, not safe. Right. Alright, so 
Now I can pretty much just focus on this last bit all in one go. Well, it's time to finish what we started. Finish off this cave. Thankfully, there's almost no odds of any battles. It's still possible for there to be a battle, but hopefully that will not pan out that way. So if I just go up and left for a while, I'll hit the same crevice I hit before, but instead of doing what I did before, now it's simply better for me to back out too, walk to the left, and reach this staircase here. And because I just get lined up right nicely with that. In fact, I probably should have memorized it this way just to go to the switch, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Because that was pretty short anyway. All the way down to the bottom. And now I can get an extreme amount of mileage out of a left and up spree here, so look forward to that. My cat's being a bother now. And I just go left and up for a long time. That'll make, that'll bring me all the way through this little rock maze here. It brings me a surprising amount of distance, really. With no battles here. This is the reason why I, uh, this area here, the, the, is the reason why I used Mog as the save point person. Part of the reason, anyway. The only part that gets made a little bit more difficult is the first part. The rest of it becomes a snap because uh, I'm using Mog in this party. And the first part doesn't even get all that much easier, really. Compared to this part, which becomes you pretty much can't die unless you get really bad luck. Or mess up. Obviously. Down. Left. There aren't any as many hints at this point of where I am. But without the battles that should hopefully be alright. So I can just concentrate on the navigation entirely. So now I should be in the lava room again. Though it's a little bit less lava y right now. It still looks like molten coals down here, but thankfully, Mog's got that snow scarf which protects him from fire a little bit. So, up. Now I go left and down. This part is one of the only parts of this dungeon that's actually kind of terrible to memorize. Because these rocks are just in weird random patterns, and it's just like, oh, I don't want to memorize this. But, again, this whole bit is pretty short, so it's not a big deal. And I just go right and down, and I get my hint right afterwards, right after the tough spot, that I, whether I've messed something up or not, so that's always good. Turns out I could still get it through with a few pseudo-diagonals, but it's still a little bit harder to visualize. That gets me that ribbon there, which may or may not even be useful, I don't know. But ribbons are fairly rare, so I want to make sure that I have as many as possible. And unlike the wing edge, people who I'm actually probably going to use can equip them. And I go left and up. And I'll just hit a random rock that's not actually one of these rocks making up the maze here. It's just part of a ledge. It's the only thing stopping me pretty much from just uh, walking straight up and almost getting out of here. So now i walk got to walk around that, and now I just continue with my up and left spree. Unfortunately, I get stuck again because this room is a douche, but once I'm out of here, it's smooth sailing for the rest of it. This room isn't super hard to navigate, but it's definitely the hardest part to navigate in this dungeon. 
right one, up one, back in the cave room. Which, since I'm still using Mog's party, is still not very big a deal. Unfortunately, I can't save before I do the part with Gogo, -Go, so... Left. I think there's a spot that I have to go around here. I can't remember for sure, but... It's not a big deal either way, because if I did make it all the way to the left side, I'm not going to be going off into the blue here. I'm just going to be walking a little bit differently into the wall, which isn't that big a deal, obviously. Right one. Slide down this ledge. And now I reach the uh, rocks here. Yep, it looks like I made it across just fine. So walk right to Gogo. -Go. I'm not sure if pressing the A button on him causes him to flip around. I know it does with some of the characters, but... Press the A button on him anyway, just for kicks. Take one step to the left. There we go. Now, here's the moment of truth. Oh, got scared there for a second. I thought I reached a battle, but it was just the uh, switch going off. There. Okay, switch back to Mog's party, and the relative safety thereof. And now I just go down and right for a long time, because that, again, brings me a, a ludicrous amount of distance, pretty much to the end of this room. The only tenth spot in this is over now, so... I can pretty much breathe easy at this point. I'm gonna have a cutscene to go through, but that's obviously no big a deal. But yeah, almost none of the navigation is left in this segment, so... Once I finish going down and right, I will be pretty much right next to the entrance to the next room. So it'll be easy to line myself up with that. Do you think that's enough? I think that's probably enough. Left one, down. So this room is just down, left, down, and then I can just go left and up and I'll hit the cutscene. And I don't even need to do anything at that point because the uh, treasure will open up before I even get a line of dialogue. So as long as I hit the event trigger I'll be hearing that noise that I need to hear. Now I go down. And finally, I just back out with my left and ups. And now as long as I didn't mess anything up, I'm going to reach the cutscene. The segment isn't over, but it might as well be at this point. Because <laughs> I don't... I get placed fairly close to the entrance in Kolingen. So I don't have very far to walk at that point. Oh right, I should probably mash the A button or this cutscene isn't going anywhere now, is it? <laughs> it's actually more uh, sounds in this cutscene than a lot of them, because there's a lot of oh noises and stuff like that. Can't really do the sound effects with my mouth that well, but whatever. I know for sure that I can at least wait until Loxstream starts playing before I start menu tricking. So yeah, no volume all at all at this point. It's like I'm just mashing A and talking to no one. <laughs> That's my job, push this button and talk to myself all day. Yippee. Well, at least I've got my cat to keep me company. I don't remember exactly what places I have left. I think this is pretty much the last of these long cutscenes. 
until the very end. I'm definitely approaching the end of this playthrough at this point. I've got to go back to Narsh, grab the amazing, amazing stuff in Narsh, now that I have Locke in my party. Oh yeah, with that I've got every character now, don't I? Oh wait, I haven't got Strago yet. <laughs> Not that that's any challenge. But after that, I've just got to pick up a few espers. I can climb the Fanatex Tower, I guess. That'll be pretty boring, but... The ancient cave is uh, fairly long, but there's a save point halfway through in a decent spot, at least. And then, of course, I've got Kefka's Tower. Oh yeah, and Abut's Rock that I may or may not end up beating. I don't know. Not 100% sure what my goal is there, but... Lock's theme. Totally nailed that <laughs> one with the timing. Alright, so once I start menu tricking, I can just get out of here. I've just got one flower bed standing in my way between myself and Victory of the Phoenix Cave. I thought it was a little bit shorter at this point, but apparently not. Oh, I thought I ruined, I'd ruin the music when I opened the menu, but apparently not. So you can hear what? So you can hear me heroically walk around this flower bed right here. It's truly the worst of fearsome foes. And just exit Kolingjin as I always have, and I'll probably never need to step foot in here again. Phoenix Cave has been destroyed.